Oh! This is weird. Oh, hello, cat. Hello. Have you been a good boy for Santa Claus? Yes. Yes. Hi folks, Santa Claus here, filling in for Dane today, and we're bringing back five bookish facts for new episodes, because people seem to like them. So today, we're going to be looking at five facts about A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. Tis the season. Alright, I have no desire to make these videos super long by talking for ages about the books, but I am going to switch up the format here and there, so you may notice that this is a bit different to previous episodes. Well, without further ado, let's look at five facts. So Charles Dickens was one of the first ever authors to give public readings of his work and the first book that he ever did a public reading of was A Christmas Carol. So he gave this reading at the Town Hall in Birmingham, which is not far from where I grew up here in the UK, to 2,000 people. Now, what this was actually 10 years after the book was published as well, so by this point it was kind of already ensconced in the public's imagination. And he introduced it by saying, Ladies and gentlemen, I have said that I bear an old love towards Birmingham and Birmingham men. Let me amend a small omission and add Birmingham women too. This ring I wear on my finger now is an old Birmingham gift, and if by rubbing it I could raise the spirit that was obedient to Aladdin's ring, I heartily assure you that my first instruction to that genius on the spot would be to place himself at Birmingham's disposal in the best of causes. I now have the pleasure of reading to you tonight a Christmas carol in four staves. Cat, what are you doing? Now the interesting thing about this is that as well as being his first reading, it was also his last. A Christmas Carol was actually originally turned down by a bunch of publishing houses, and it's an early example of self-publishing. So by this point, Dickens was an accomplished writer himself, and so he did all of the editing, all the marketing, all of that stuff by himself. He actually deliberately kept the price of the book as low as possible, just to offset the costs to make it easily accessible. That's actually one of the reasons it was kind of a failure of a book. It did sell well, but it made no money whatsoever. Fact number three, this one's short and simple. It took Dickens six weeks to write the book and he wrote it all by hand. As well as being an early example of a public reading and a self-published book, it was also an early example of a case surrounding piracy. There was an illegal reprint of the book two months after its initial release by Parley's Illuminated Library. Cat's coming back. But Dickens actually took Parley's Illuminated Library to court and he won the case but he still had to pay £700 in fees which is equivalent to about £60,000 today. Basically this book just kept on costing him money. Ebenezer Scrooge is actually based upon a chap called Ebenezer Scroggy. Dickens saw Scroggy's tombstone in a cemetery in Scotland and misread the inscription. He thought it said mean man when actually it said meal man. Dickens wrote that down and planned to use it later, and that's kind of how Scrooge came about. But interestingly, the real-life Scroggy, he was a rich grain merchant and distiller. And he was popular, but he was also a bit of a lech. He was a bit of a wrong one. And he was, uh, he was a fan of having big extravagant parties. So anyway, that's this Christmas special episode of Five Bookish Facts over. I've got one more old episode to re-upload and then moving on, I'm then going to be doing new episodes of Five Bookish Facts. So please do leave a comment with a book or an author that you'd like to see an episode on and I will get to it when possible. And we'll be back in the new year with new episodes. In the meantime, thanks a lot for watching. Thanks as always for subscribing and all of your support. And I will see you soon in another video. Ho, ho, ho. Green Giant.